So you're a marketer or a business owner with limited resources, and how are you supposed to create high quality video content, right? You see other people doing it, other businesses, I'm like, how? With limited time, limited resources, limited budget, how are you supposed to do it? So let me walk you through what I've seen the last 10 or 15 years working with small startups all the way to the big guys like Microsoft and Intel, and I see the patterns emerging where I see people that are successful and companies and people that really struggle that you're like, hold on a second, your team's massive, you have unlimited budget, why are you struggling? You shouldn't be. Okay, so let me walk you through some of the tips and the strategies right here to be able to create high quality video content with limited resources. Because in reality, we know this, you see kids in their mom's basement using one of these and they'll take down a massive company. So resources or budget is not necessarily what really slows you know people down. It's more of the mindset, etc. So number one, I'm going to talk about is embrace agility. Now, we primarily at in-house video focus with B2B tech companies. And the irony is the B2B space typically is not that agile, right? Especially we work with a lot of MSPs or ISVs where you're selling software services, the sales cycle could be six or 12 months, and it's complicated, it's large, you know, million dollar deals. And that culture and that mindset percolates throughout um, you know, entire uh, organizations. So sometimes marketing campaigns will take weeks, if not months, to engage your kid data back. And when it comes to reality of video, the first thing you need to do is you need to shoot it and get it out there and learn from the data. So embracing agility. Now, I know this is hard for B2B tech companies, especially when everything around it for the B2B tech sometimes moves a lot slower, right? You have big deals, some of the sales cycles, even like 12 months or even a couple of years. So that percolates into the culture of the company. Now, unfortunately, that um, is a burden on the marketing team because marketing needs to be agile. So how can you do that, adapt and be agile in video content? Be realistic on the output of the video content that you're really gonna get in the B2B space. Are you gonna get a million views? No. Are you gonna get 100,000? Probably not. Are you gonna shoot to get about 500 or 1,000? Yeah. You know what, in the first ones, you're probably gonna get about 100, and that is okay. But you need to get it out there because you're gonna learn very quickly. Video content has the ability to be very flexible, and you can adjust your plans very quickly to get it out there, and as soon as you pop it. Don't forget social media content or email content. It just comes and goes, so we put too much effort on trying to be perfect because in the B2B world, doing implementations and software where you have to be, otherwise the failure and the cost is really high. If you put out their video that really doesn't stick with the audience, it's okay, but you need to be able to learn that. So having that adaptability to quickly adapt and be agile is really key. You need to be able to focus and do quick versions and quick turnarounds to adapt and learn. And you can actually look at software, how do we do this, right? Because software used to be, hey, we gotta get out perfect. And now you're like, well, let's put it out there. It may have some bugs. Please let us know what you think. Video content is no different. And it's okay to do that in a B2B SMB environment when you got revenues of 500 or half a billion dollars. It's okay to do that. And in fact, honesty and building trust um, is done through human behavior and it's not 100% perfect. Hence why we don't use actors anymore, etc. cetera, and video content for business. You need to prioritize speed because if you don't, you're gonna get sucked into the cycle um, and ultimately you're gonna produce a fraction of the content that you can put to, uh, that you can do because you have a larger team usually um, in the B2B tech space and there's so much more to do, but prioritizing on value, speed, over perfectionism is ultimately going to get you much more content out there, which is going to get you much more data to learn and ultimately more conversions. Because at the end of the day, B2B is no, no different than struggling with B2C, which is that the buyers, they're all on Instagram, they're all on TikTok. So we're competing for their eyeballs. And so they're used to that volume of content. So B2B has got to get used to that ability and speed and being agile is obviously a big proponent to be able to do that and see success. The second thing I want to talk about is minimizing revisions. I can't tell you enough how important this is. A lot of people don't realize, especially in the world of business and probably outside of marketing specifically, you add a revision to anything, it's an exponential increase in the ability to get that out to drive leads. So people think, hey, I'm gonna make that change. You know what, it's a small change, but I'm gonna make it. Well, in the video world, that requires a project manager to initiate that change, look at it, mark it down, give it to the editor. The editor then has to spin up the project files, make the change, re-export it, wait for the export, upload the versions back into it to get another approval. Once it's approved, then it has to also be um, exported in high resolution to be 
put out there on the social channel or wherever it's going to be used then has to be uploaded and executed there's so much content around it so one tiny little revision has a ripple effect and slows every single thing down this is where content creators really accelerate and will crush any company doesn't matter the size of it or a budget if they get the content out there. If you're gonna take anything from anything I've ever told you from any video you saw, minimize your revisions and you will exponentially increase your ability to create content. And I guarantee you the stuff that you see because you watched the video nine or 10 times, nobody, not your prospects, are gonna see at all. It's just a fact because we're here where, especially when you somebody gives you, can you look at this video and review it? What's your number one take? Your number one take is to look and find something that's wrong, right? If I tell you, look at this video and tell me 10 things you see right, and then I say, tell, hey, look at this video and tell me 10 things you see wrong. It's so much easier to do the 10 things that you see wrong. But in reality, you got to ask yourself a question. Is that change that I'm asking for going to help conversion? And if you can't answer it, probably the answer is no. So don't do it. In order to minimize revisions, one of the things you have to do is set clear goals. What is the goal of the video content, right? And is it to drive views? Then that's a conversation you're going to have to have. Is it drive to have conversion? Yes. Engagement? Yes. So when you look at that revision and do it, does it match the goal? Is it going to help generate more views? Is it going to help more conversion, etc.? And typically that the answer is no. Establish guidelines and give people a checklist of what it means to have a proper revision. So a lot of people don't know what they're looking for. And when they look at something, they're using their personal connection and personal feelings as to what they like and what they don't like in video content. Perfect example with our customers, we're always kind of pushing the boundaries. And I'm telling the editing teams and everybody around customers start putting a lot more b-roll in there to start chopping things up now a lot of our customers are coming back saying hey this is too distracting and my argument is well it's not about you mr customer it's about your audience and your audience is used to distraction and please don't come to me saying well our audience is a little bit older we're all the same thing i watch tiktok everybody watches instagram things are moving on a, con a constant basis right if boring flat work then that's what people look at so you have to have ability to be able to also establish guidelines as to what's important. For example, if you have something in there and you have some text and people say, well, this text is a little bit big or this text is different at this video than it's that video. Tell people it's okay to be different because we don't want to be static and we want to be different because that's what people need to capture today's attention in a very distracted environment. So you have to be able to test it, but you have to tell people people do that because when people look at content and especially in a business environment they're used to what works for them like here is the guidelines for a presentation here is how the image is supposed to sit in this corner here's how the text goes so everything's uniform and when we ship it out well if you do that in video format you're gonna just create boring ass videos that nobody's gonna watch and that is what unfortunately b2b uh, tech space is learning the hard way and so you have to break some boundaries you have to break some barriers and you have to create guidelines and educate your team that, hey, it's okay that this thing is moving fast. It's okay that some shakes away. It's uh, shakes comes into the video. It's okay that we're using B-roll content to be able to do that, um, to distract and to engage the audience. So guess what? They don't go, that's a nice video. Oh, what's happening on Instagram? Ooh, that's kind of cool. Oh, I like that. Oh, you're competing with the thumb scroll, okay? That, ladies and gentlemen, is a three-second algorithm. That is what you're competing in the B2B tech space. Lastly, to minimize revisions, please accept good enough, <laughs> okay? And I know we're all being taught, don't ever expect good enough in video format. When you're creating video content and you're looking at it and you're in it, there's always gonna be something to fix. The problem is fixing that takes exponential energy and time and it has no benefits and no statistical benefits at all that that change will create a larger effect, which is i.e. most people care about conversion and leads. And in fact, what creates conversion and leads is authentic, real stories continuously. That is what creates leads, <laughs> okay? In video format is continuous <laughs> content in video format that delivers value. And that's what I try to do, right? And that is what actually works. So if you got a limited resources, how to do you know content quickly and efficiently and high volume volume of it in video content is you got to define specific outputs. A lot of people go to this and I see this everywhere in every company. And sometimes the bigger the company, the, the bigger the problem is, is like, we want to create a video. Okay. 
cool. Go around the table, kind of video. And immediately the people start talking about what edits and what shots they want to see inside the video. Immediately. And does anybody ask, well, hold on a second. Where is this video going? Uh, going. It's on LinkedIn. Cool. How do we know people are going to care? Okay. Well, what do people care about? Right. And what type of video content is that? And what's the goal of the video content that we want to do? And then all of a sudden you realize you're like, well, hold on a second. We don't need all this fancy video stuff that we want to do. We just need a 10 second high impact video that talks about these three points using B-rolls because we want to drive, you know, this point across and get people to download this white paper. So what you want to do in, in terms to be very effective and scalable with limited resources, please first define the scope of and the output of what that video is. Um, and why are you doing it in the first place? And what do you want people to achieve? That will then drive what type of video, how long, and what should go in there. And most of the times you'd be surprised how short it is <laughs> and value-based and to the point. You gotta assign roles. Um, and what that means is sometimes we go, hey, go to the editors and, or go to your editing team and editing service. And they're like, hey, I want you to create this video content. What I've seen a lot of success, this is what we do at in-house video, is we have project managers who understand the client and the scope. And then we have editors who really understand how to edit and we have very clear different roles of like hey if you're managing this video your job is to manage it not to edit it you know not to be the creative is to manage and execute that piece of content to get out the door on its deadline so we're not asking for feedback etc same thing about the executives when you get executives involved be very clear i'm giving you approval to shoot this video content because this is what we need to arrive at but i'm not going to get your feedback on this video content because you are not going to provide any feedback that's valuable unless you can guarantee me that the feedback that you're providing is going to increase conversion then that's a different story but have very clear goals and typically the people outside of the marketing department unfortunately just don't have the understanding of what content is unless you educate them right of what new age video content is because everybody thinks that you got to spend 15 20 grand on video content i tell this company i'm like no spend 500 bucks and give the nineteen thousand five hundred dollars to google and drive engagement on it you're going to get 10x your time on that piece of asset all day long. It's a simple algorithm. So be careful and clearly assign roles, especially when you have limited resources and say, you're in charge of project management. You're in charge of talking to the editing team. You're in charge of approving the title of whatever it is and very quick roles and then ensure that everybody understands to get minimum revisions and stick to the schedule. You got limited resources, you lack on time, lack on budget, and you wanna really rock video content set a schedule and stick to it. Okay. Now, what does it mean to sit, you know, set a schedule to a video content? Okay. I've been doing video for way too long. So many companies and I've yet to hear a company we ever work with or talk to that's even using us or not using us that say, oh, we're crushing our video content and we're delivering video content every single time on time and on schedule. It's one of those things that always drops back. Why? Number one, revisions for sure. Multiple revisions that don't need to happen. Number two, it's way too complicated than you need to do. And everybody's over thinks it and tries to make it perfect. Those are kind of my three things. So if you set a schedule and say, hey, we want to launch this video in the next seven days, you're very clearly going, well, it's going to take a couple days to edit. I guess we got to shoot it real quick. Then we got to kind of script it. And all of a sudden, if you give yourself a deadline, you're like, well, am I going to spend two hours scripting it? No. Am I going to write down like five bullet points that are really important that I talk about every day just to be on point like I have here and start filming it? Yes. So if you set a deadline to work backwards and really stick to it, it's going to compress everything else. And especially when you have limited time resources, you're going to tell yourself, is this really important? Most of the time, the answer is no, right? And that's when you're going to really start pumping out content and really start getting it out there and seeing what the audience wants. The last thing I'm going to talk about here is how to really scale content with limited resources. You have to simplify the process. Video production inherently came from the Hollywood era, which is a complex complicated thing. Right now, down the street here, they're shooting a movie. Okay, we got this letter, they're shooting a movie, and I see it, they're awesome, they're using a house, it's probably going to be seen in a movie, something that's relatively short, maybe five or ten minutes in a movie. I kid you not, there's seven trucks here, half the streets are blocked off, about a kilometer down the street is where the entire film crew gets fed, there's like two semi-trailers, 
There's all of these things that they're sending out, canteens. That is where the video production mentality for the business came from, was a movie. At the same time here, I'm literally, my barbecue right now is upstairs heating up because I'm gonna cook my steak here in the next seven minutes. And I'm crushing out at least 20 to 30 minutes of high value content, doing one take and just dominating, which is about helping you and my audience do the best thing you can do by just sharing what I know, okay? That is the vast difference in today's environment of shooting content. So how do you really simplify that process? Well, the number one thing is always have this mindset of providing value. Just provide value and help people be better. That's what we want on the internet. It doesn't matter if you're selling a multi, multi million dollar, you know, ERP implementation solution or you're selling this cheese knife that I have here for some reason. It don't matter. People want to know value. So when you go value, you look at, okay, so how do you simplify the process? Well, a lot of times people's like, what kind of video content do we need to do? And they struggle with this. I'm like, well, what are the top 10, 20 questions that your customers have? Why don't you just answer those instead of text and do them in video? And then that automatically, that mentality starts simplifying the process. And then the second one is don't start focusing on video as being one. Focus video as being a communication stream. You're not gonna get it right on the one, it's not one, it's multitudes of video content that constantly you know, focuses. And the last one is limit the scope. If you're gonna shoot a two minute video, do you need to script it and memorize it? No, that's really hard to do, you're gonna sound like a robot. Do you need to prep with some talking points that you naturally give across? Yes, so limit the scope and be realistic as to what the output of the video content is. And I guarantee you, if you start pumping out video content on a regular basis, you'll see dramatic results. And all comes from simplicity of the entire process and let in-house video do the heavy lifting for you, the managing and the editing very cost-effectively, very quickly. And I guarantee you, you're gonna see success.